Do you, do you tell your mom or your dad you're doing this? Oh, oh my God. I tell nothing because I like it. And you don't talk to them since we saw each other? No, since, since, they, since my dad came to the house at night. Shannon, yeah. we're live. Okay. You can keep talking. And Jeff is coming in, but he is not... Uh, there yet. You can keep talking. Okay. And I'm just trying to. In, but he is not. Uh, is that me or you, babe? Uh, my there phone is slower than the actual, so I've got to turn it off. You can keep talking. Okay. And I'm Jeff just trying to. But he is not. Uh, well, I muted you for right now. Um, So you have to unmute in a bit. Everyone out there in Facebook land, starting to get ready for 99 problems, but a pitch ain't one today. And we've got. All right. So we've got Alex, we've got Jeff on the line waiting to come in. We've got. Joe Bennett coming in today. We got Fonda Brewer out in Facebook land. Hey, Joe, how you doing? Hey, doing great. How are you? We're doing well. Just saying my hellos and uh, uh, welcoming everyone. Uh, are you pitching today, Joe? I, I will not be pitching today, but I do want to watch. Um, okay. I'm at work but I can watch and listen and learn, so. Okay, well, welcome. We're glad you're here. Um, we've got more people coming in. We've got, uh, uh, I think Duran's down in Atlanta, so we're getting multi-state here. Yes, sir, yes, sir. How you doing, Duran? I'm doing well. How are you, Al? We are good. So we're, uh, we're also live on Facebook, Duran. Um, okay. And we've got uh, a couple of uh, people pitching uh, from the Fledge today. And then uh, we'll have a few people pitching from outside the Fledge as well. So right now, uh, would you like to go first? Would that be okay yeah. with you? Yeah, that, that's, that's totally fine. All right. Uh, should I activate my camera? Uh, when you're ready. Um, when you activate your camera, you will show up live on Facebook. Um, until then, you it's only uh, Alex, Joe, and I. Uh, okay. There. All right, I'm about to activate it now. We'd love to see you, actually. And I'm I not have to turn my video off for just a second, and I will be right back. No problem, Joe. How you doing, Alex? You can just do thumbs up if you want, if you're okay, or thumbs down if you're not. Okay. All right. How you doing this morning, Duran? I'm doing really good. Thanks for having me. Of course. All right, Jeremy Hurt is coming in. So we, we ebb and flow on Facebook, so we lose a couple people once in a while as we're going live, uh, but that's no problem. Hello to you, Shana. Hello to you, Jeremy. Good morning. How you doing today? Good. How are you? I'm good. Hey, are you going to pitch today? Uh, no, I'm just checking it out. I don't have any pitch ready yet, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'll be doing it eventually. Okay. No worries. Um, so usually I wait till five after before I start uh, having our kind of deep discussion about who the sponsor is, what we're trying to do, and all of that. So up until then, we just chit chat a little bit. So I try to monitor out all of the comments and questions out on Facebook uh, when 
uh, I see them. So I know Fonda's out there watching this right now and a few other people. Uh, I know this first part can uh, sometimes not be as exciting as the pitches themselves. So any help you guys can give me uh, to entertain our Facebook Live people is always helpful. So you want to sing a song, Jeremy? Tell us a poem, magic trick. Joe, can, if you can make a quarter fall out of my ear right now, it would be amazing. And if I had a quarter, I would help you. I'm a good magician. I'm not that good. <laughs> well, we got to get this uh, uh, time together then. Maybe we should practice something and then. <laughs> no, I know that's not how it works. It's really, it would have to surprise me as much as everyone else. And then I'll show I you something. Up. I'll show you something real quick here. All right. All right, here we go. See that? Nice. Very quick, or apparently. Were you going to say a poem, Jeremy? I can, sure. Uh, I got to, if I can find one for you. <clears throat> While you're doing that, are you going to pitch Shana or are you going to pitch CJ? No, not today. I'm just here to watch. Right, thank you for being here. Yep. Observing. All right. Your trick looked amazing on Facebook Live, Joe. <laughs> Alex wants to learn. <laughs> How are you, Alex? Okay. I am, we're sitting at uh, just about 9.05. So I'm, I'm actually going to give another minute um, to let more people come in. Uh, so far, we've got Duran pitching from Atlanta. We've got Alex pitching from the basement of the Fledge. And then we've got Pilgrim Norma up at the sanctuary uh, pitching from my desk when it's uh, her turn. Uh, Claire, just seeing you come in. Are you going to pitch today, Claire? I am. Awesome. You okay with number four? That'd be great. All right. There's a, there's a secret about 99 problems, but a pitch ain't one that I can't tell you guys yet. But I'm going to give you a hint. People have, who have done 99 problems, but a pitch ain't one, progress further in the other efforts that they do. And we have evidence of that. We have a lot of data of that. This is our 13th 99 problems, but a pitch ain't one uh, today. And uh, we've given away uh, now around $1,000 in prize money. We've had uh, um, people pitch in the hatching. We've had people apply for grants. We've had people um, uh, apply for accelerator programs. And this polishing, it's not, it's not really even the polishing of the pitch. It is the condensing and making clear your idea that I think is really helping people. And I'm excited to have like Duran here today because he's going to do a pitch that he's going to try to put out there for Entrepreneurial Magazine. Is that right? Yeah, uh, entrepreneur.com. Yes. Yeah. So there's an elevator pitch contest. So he's really just, uh, you know, here practicing that. Um, so I've seen, you know, his recent pitch. I've seen Alex's recent pitch. Um, I know what. Uh, Hey, do you want me to call you, address you as Pilgrim Norma or just Norma? Okay, I've seen Norma's idea and I'm really excited about Claire because she keeps uh, coming up with all these uh, different uh, surprises every time we talk. So let's see what she's up to today. Uh, we're sitting at 9.07 right now. We are, uh, we have a sponsor. So a, a few weeks ago, my brother was in town uh, his wife's a teacher. My wife's a teacher. There's a lot of, so they wanted to sponsor 99 problems, but they don't really have a company. So they just pick the concept of 
teachers and being a teacher. And so I have to uh, shout out to my brother, Tom Norris. This is where you laugh, Tom and Jerry. I've been hearing it for 51 years now, but it's all right. I always win. I'm the mouse. He's the cat. And then we, I want to give a shout out to Vanessa, his wife, but I want to give a double, triple, quadruple shout out today because Shannon has been working with Alex. So Shannon's in the background over there. She's been working with Alex to uh, prep him for the Youth Entrepreneurial Showcase for this year, um, but it was canceled. So it should have been in March, but with uh, the pandemic coming and everything that disrupted school and disrupted the entrepreneurial world, Alex didn't get a chance to pitch. So throughout the summer, we've been, or Shannon has been working with Alex to refine his pitch and get his business real. So we've got a, some material, as you know, at the Fledge. We've got sewing machines at the Fledge. We've got different types of equipment. And I just want to give a shout out to Shannon and the millions of other teachers who I know are out there grabbing kids and not grabbing them <laughs> and shaking them. I don't mean it that way. Who are getting kids engaged with this new way of learning and these new experiences and trying to figure out how to, how to keep this educational uh, system going without... Uh, harming people without hurting people. So, you know, we're really, you know, I'm, I'm personally very pro school being online and school being thought of in a different way. Uh, because if it's not, you know, my, my wife is at risk, my family's at risk, all these other kids are at risk, their families are at risk. And, you know, if we can talk about postponing an election, we certainly shouldn't be talking about going back to school. So, Mr. President, please make up your mind. Is this, uh, you know, what is it that you want? But everyone else, let's keep our kids safe. And all you teachers out there, you might want to think about, you know, not showing up if they make you show up. And you've got power. Don't forget that. There's a lot more teachers uh, than there are a lot of other people. So thank you, teachers. We love you, teachers. Um, you've got power. And Norma's a, I was, she's a bad, I'm going to say bad, but oh, she, I can say it. Norma's a badass and she's an organizer and wait till you see her. Um, and she's given me the thumbs up to remind those teachers, you got a lot of power. You're in the driver's seat and use that power to protect these kids and protect yourselves. Um, we also always give a shout out to Black Lives Matter. We, we very much appreciate what you are doing, like we always talk about, you know, there's, when you look at the Fledge as an organization, we are with you, whether it's uh, the allies that get to go back home, whether it's the accomplices that can't go home until we're done with this, or whether it is the, the Black Indigenous people of color that work out of the Fledge. Real shout out to Black Lives Matter, and y'all stay strong, and you stay focused, and you stay on it. Um, because I know it's getting tiring and I know it's exhausting and I know it's wrapped around a pandemic or a pandemic is wrapped around your effort, but it's so very important to all the other people who are also fighting for their human rights and fighting for all of this. And, you know, it's, we're with you, we're accomplices with you. And when you need us, we're a resource for you. And don't ever forget that the pledge is yours. And speaking of that, I want to talk to Steve real quick. Steve, are you going to uh, pitch today? You're on mute, bud. Yes, we are. Yes, All we right. Are today. Yeah. How you guys doing? Good. Very good. And what about you, Erica? You going to pitch? Not today. Okay, no problem. So, uh, that's kind of uh, what I have for the warm up. So here's our order. We have five people pitching today. Uh, we've got, uh, oh, Fonda, thanks for putting a shout out to Angela. 
uh, Angela Waters Austin, a real superstar in the community, One Love Global, Black, Loves Ma Black Lives Matter Michigan, Black Lives Matter Lansing. Um, and I always wanna uh, mention Angela as much as I can because she's working really, really hard. And you know, just if you never give her a word of encouragement or give her a little bit of energy, please give her a little bit of energy. Um, and I also shout out to Erica and Michael Lynn uh, and giving them a little bit of energy towards America 20 to life and the village Lansing. They're another huge proponents of teachers and the kids in this uh, community. So all you people out there fighting hard, we're so proud of you. Um, and I know Jeff's on the line. He sit, he sits around um, with, with Paul Burnsong and Michael and they chatted up and Jeff's out there on the front lines too. So thank you everybody. And Yanis is watching from online today and she's uh, the winner from last week with Lansing Catalyst. So shout out to you, Yanis. So everyone, let's get started. Duran, you're gonna go first, all right? So okay. basically how this is gonna work, I've gotta get behind me. You're gonna see 139 come up in a minute when I, when I get my uh, projector on. And when you start talking, I'm going to press the start and it's going to count down to zero. You have a, uh, a minute 39 or 99 seconds to convince the crowd here that uh, you should get $99. So okay. you got a couple minutes before, or you got, a, you got 30 seconds or so. I'm just going to, when you see that 139 show up there, you can start whenever you want and I'll start uh, the, the countdown. Okay. Uh, gotta wake everything up real quick. Jump on and say good luck. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Hi, I'm Duran, founder and CEO of Barber to Beauty. So many times when you walk into a barbershop or salon without an appointment, you have to wait in line. Now because of COVID and convenience, it's become a necessity for barbers and stylists to have an, an online presence. We solved that problem with Barber to Beauty. 70% of professionals equaling 2.5 million did not have this opportunity before. Our platform offers bar licensed and unlicensed professionals an online uh, subscription-based model that allows barbers and stylists an easier way to connect with their clientele. This is a proven concept with competitors in my space who are already making millions annually. What makes us different is that we grow your business from students to beauty professionals, as well as offer job postings and collect consumer data of clients and professionals, which can be leveraged with hair care companies. Today, I am asking for a total of $500,000 with no equity involved. The money will be used to build a team of engineers, hire social media influencers, and pay for marketing and branding. Thank you for your time today. Very good, Duran. So I, I heard his, uh, his talk last night, or about one o'clock yesterday, three o'clock, I was late, so 3.30. Um, and it's come a long ways. I really like the, the way you add. And just to clarify, the Fledge does not have $500,000. He's getting ready for <laughs> another pitch. Uh, if we had $500,000, we'd have uh, maybe a little bit better production than this. But good job, Duran. I like the way you've uh, changed that up a little bit. So Thank I you. got that message. Uh, you did run till like uh, a, a little over a minute. So you got to probably condense that a little bit for your final pitch, because I think it yes. has to be 60 seconds, but very Correct. good job. Thank you. Hey, Alex, you ready, man? All right. So I'm going to do the same thing. You just got to wait for me to get that uh, rolling up there and then you can pitch. Uh, Duran, the crowd will ask questions at the end. If you can stick around. Um, can you stick around? 
yeah, I mean, I had a, uh, I actually had a, a haircut appointment at ten, but that, that's that's fine. I'll, I'll try we'll, to. Get we'll get done before then. We'll get you okay. out of here before then. Okay. All right. All right. Just a second, Alex. You got this. Kid. Hello, my name is Alex, and my company name is called Fashion for Queens. And my mission is to make clothes feel comfortable, beautiful, and nice. And my product line is dresses, puffy dresses, and skirts, and blouse, and pants. My, my solution is I make clothes at affordable price, and if you vote for me, I'll use that money to buy equipment and fabrics. Please vote for me. I'll dress you as a queen. Thank you. Bye. All right. Good job, Alex. You feeling good, man? Yes. All right. And remember, you know, one of the things is we listened to what Duran said. We listened to what Alex said. You know, if there's something, if you've got, an idea on how to help, if you've got fabric, if you've got some extra equipment like scissors or some sort of something I don't even know about, then please uh, you know, connect with us. The, the serendipity that happens because of the large numbers and the diversity that we uh, cultivate and maintain is amazing. Magic happens all the time, Joe. Um, and Joe's the, uh, you're the personification of it for us. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so good job, Alex, sit tight. We'll have uh, people helping you out or, or we'll be uh, having people asking you questions in a minute. So now uh, Norma is coming up and she's gonna take, a, take my seat and I'm gonna get the projector going as soon as you are ready. Here, can you want me to take this off? It's on the floor. Oh. There you go. Are you off? Doing all right. As, as good as I ever look. <laughs> I think I should take my glasses off so it doesn't reach up shine back. So when you start talking, I'll press the button. Okay, and so you, can you cue me when, I, when my, I'm out five seconds before it ends? Thank you. Okay. All right, we'll just wing it because I didn't know about the one minute. <laughs> okay. Ready? Yeah. Well, hi, folks. I'm Norma, and I have an idea, and I think it can be developed into something that makes money for uh, places like the Fledge because I love the whole um, the whole way it operates. I will just say that loving. And so um, my idea is uh, picture this. You're at the grocery store and you're six feet away from the person in front of you. And they've got this big heart on the back of their t-shirt and it says, and that includes you. And so you got to find out what that's about. What includes me with a love heart? I don't know, I'm lonely. So um, you turn around, you show them the front of the cart. And the front, the front of the t-shirt says, it's a stop sign and it says, stay back. I need to protect someone that I care about. Does that change the idea about being afraid of people? No, it doesn't. It, it's open to parents in the 20 plus to 30 something range because they've got money. They're very motivated. They spend a lot of money to keep those kids safe. And if this reinforces the masks, because of course you're wearing a mask, um, they've got a reason to buy three or four of them and tell all their friends because it'll be like the pet rock. Everybody wants one of those. Everybody wants to emphasize the value of caring for other people. So we're not going to call names. We're going to build community and we're going to keep kids safe if somebody wants them to go to the physical place <laughs> or even anytime they're out with you. Okay, so um, this has potential for employing lots of you. 
and being very creative and use all the talents of the designers and web designers. So I hope we can uh, run with it and uh, I'll prepare a PowerPoint or something better the next time. Thank you. Great. <laughs> Thank you, Norma. Um, so hidden in there is also a request or a call for people who might want to help with the design, people who might want to help with the screen printing. And we've got t-shirts, we've got uh, ink, we've got the screen printing equipment. So we're also willing to help cultivate those skills if somebody wants to learn how to screen print. Uh, so besides hoping for the votes and hoping to win, uh, that's also a call to action if anybody wants to get involved with the project. Um, and you know what I love that uh, uh, Norma just said is that next time I'll have. Don't forget that. I think Steve is back for his second time. Claire's back for her, you know, 28th time, even though we've only done it 13 times. Um, this is a iteration. This is a series of events where um, we're trying to continually improve. We're trying to get better. We're trying to refine and pivot and figure out, you know, which hypothesis is sticking and which one is not. So next up is going to be Claire. But before I get to Claire, um, Jeremy, are you going? To, oh, I'm sorry, not Jeremy Hurt. OG Jeremy. Uh, it is not too late. Thank you. He just answered there. So uh, Jeremy Like is also going to pitch. So I'm almost ready for you, Claire. Uh, give me one second. When you see the 139 up there, you are ready to go. OK. Good morning, my name is Claire. I'm a performance coach for Visionary Mamas and the founder of Heroic Mama. For the last three years, I've been wrestling with a pretty big question. Why in the era of information, when the right answer is just a click away, do we have such a large gap between the vision for what we have, for what a good life should be, and our actual lived reality? I was a health and wellness coach before I became a mom, but absolutely nothing I learned seemed to fit with the demands of early motherhood. I stopped taking care of myself until I spiraled and I hit rock bottom. When I made the decision that I wanted to live, I turned to the place where I had always found healing before, to books. And as part of my healing journey, I began to write what I called mama's notes. What sets mama's notes apart from cliff notes, philosopher's notes, book hub, or any other book review is that these aren't reviews written from sanitized research or from a perspective outside of motherhood. It's written from the core of my humanity and the depth of my struggle. I wrote my first mama's note one week after attempting to take my own life. This was the real story. And the goal that I have is not to conform ourselves to the research of what we should do, but instead learn how to utilize this information in service of our best selves in the current season of life. My vision is to build a membership community of a growing library of mama's notes paired with a powerful community. Maybe things aren't so hard is that we're trying to do it all alone. Heroic Mama is on a mission to provide personal development for moms by a mom. Good job, Claire. Thank you so much. Oh, I was just, uh, you know, as I listened to the pitches today and I look at, you know, what we've got on deck here, and I hear how, you know, Alex is just starting out and Claire is really getting refined and the difference in the kind of continuum of that. Uh, what a strong community we have and what a strong community we can make if we, you know, continue to execute and continue to do what we said. And I, 
I'm going to actually wait till Steve and Jeremy finish, but I, I really want to summarize that before we uh, do our questions and answers today. Um, so I talked a lot, Steve. You ready? You got the... the... Yeah, I'm ready. How you guys doing today? You know you always get points for kids and all that, so don't worry about the... Uh... Oh, yeah, you get the points. Yeah, you know I got to get the points for the kids, man. Steve loves the kids. All right. Hi, I'm Steve Manning. I'm the CEO of Koala's Pantry. Koala's Pantry? You can hear it. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi, my name is Steve Manning, and I'm here at Koala's Pantry, CEO. What we're doing is we make affordable baby food in pouch form for children, small ages of six months, to toddlers. Like this one, for example. This is a healthy papaya, mango, banana smoothie for kids, like my kids. Who's hungry right now? Who's hungry right now? He's hungry. He wants to eat. So every kid. <laughs> oh, no. We just lost Steve completely. So we're going we're gonna to jump down to you, Jeremy. Um, and this is... Uh, you know, the, the, the pandemic and virtual stuff and kids at home and all of that, it happens. So we're going to see if Steve comes back on. Uh, we hope that he does. And in the meantime, I'm going to get Jerry like, Jeremy like uh, ready. And I've had to, I have a problem with my projector right now. So I'm going to hold up the timer in front of you. Okay, Jeremy. That works. And if Steve comes back on, we'll deal with that afterwards. But you all ready? Yep. All right. When you start talking, I'll hit start. In 1939, the American Library Association adopted the Library Bill of Rights. This document, radically inclusive for its time, included wording stating that the use of a library could not be denied because of origin, age, background, or views. Unfortunately, Hollywood and other media still portray a classical view of a library. Large poorly lit rooms with row upon row of dusty old books. The librarian is typically portrayed as a female who is overprotective of books and goes around shushing people. As a whole, libraries are doing many great things. Early reading programs, outreach to teen and senior centers, and online programming through social media. As a library staff member, several things have become clear. It will take an organized effort to alter the public's perception of the modern library. Staff are enthusiastically on board with change, but we cannot do it alone. We need to recruit members of the public, people of all ages, races, and beliefs, including underrepresented groups, the small business owners in search of a co-working space, the tinkerers and artists who have artwork or products they want to showcase. The Library Perception Liberation Front will be formed of a cross-section of library staff and the previously mentioned groups, sharing a common goal to bring the perception of the library into the 21st century by promoting libraries as safe, multi-purpose spaces with resources for reading, social activities, and experiments. All right, good wow, job. Wow, I pulled one of Claire's tricks. Ah, it, it was perfect. <laughs> you might get the uh, exactly on time uh, uh, award today. So again, good job, Jeremy. Uh, so let's see, we got Matthew Zarka coming in and no Steven, so I'm gonna wait for Matt to come in for a second. Uh, but who should... Give me one second. Are you there, uh, Mr. Zarka? Can you hear us, Matt? Maybe not. Well, we're going to move forward. Oh, he's not, his audio is not connected right now. Um, so what I am trying to do right now is open it up to everybody to ask any questions that you might like to ask. 
and that includes you too, uh, uh, Norma. If you would like to ask a question of someone else, that is perfectly fine. So does anybody have a question that they would like to start out with? Hello? Yeah. I have a question for Claire Powers. Okay. Um, you know, you are one of the stars of the show. You've been consistent, <laughs> Claire. Very consistent tonight. I personally love what you, your shift. If we haven't been able to watch all of it, so uh, could you talk about your pivot from the heroic mama to mama's notes a little bit more? Yeah, sure. Um, so I think there's some new people on who haven't been here with us on our weekly uh, scrum every morning for since March. <laughs> um, but I started out with heroic mama. Um, it's just like a coaching program, providing resources and support for moms in the community and online on social platforms. Um, and I was having a really hard time getting any momentum going. Uh, there was, um, it was just, I had a very strong concept, but not so much of a concrete, like, so what does that mean? I got that question a lot. So like, what is it that you actually do? Like, where do I go? What, how is this gonna help me? Um, and so I went back to the drawing board and said, I'm super committed and believe in heroic mama and I need to build a stronger foundation. Um, so, and have like a body of work. So when people say, what does heroic mama do? What do I get? Like if your membership is 10 bucks a month, like what do I actually, how does that serve me? And I have been writing mama's notes, um, for now two and a half years, um, and so I've now just making the shift to using that as the core um, streamline now for the next year is gonna, just gonna be my focus on mama's note of getting them into correct format. So into eight page PDF, 20 minute audios and five minute YouTube videos, and then have that as a searchable database is the goal. Thank you. I think it has more of an emotional impact with Mama's Notes. I can tell you I started to cry when you delivered your uh, pitch again today. So, And uh, just a comment for Alex. Um, I love I'll dress you as a queen. That's yeah. good. You're welcome. You like what, CJ? I'm sorry, I didn't hear, understand. How we ended and he said, I'll dress you as a queen. He's got, a, he's got his... his yeah, I, I like that too. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have a couple questions from the crowd on Facebook. I'm going to interject one if you don't mind. Uh, one is, Alex, what makes your clothing line different? Um, I'm intrigued, want to better understand uh, your what and why. So why are you doing this, Alex? Uh, what, what do you have and why are, why are you uh, motivated by it? And this is Miss Fonda Brewer um, out in Facebook asking you. Uh, because I like it and it's the only thing I can do this. I like. Why, so why do you want to make it affordable? Because some of the people out there can't afford the people that have expensive clothes. So I make my clothes affordable so they can afford it. Uh, uh, afford it. And still I had another question for Alex. Claire has a question. Go ahead, Claire. Yeah, I was just wondering if your clothes are going to be like something um, like a one of a kind design. So if I came to you and I wanted something, you would design it for me or would it be something that you're looking at going and having it in a store, more of a larger production? I'll do both. Very cool, thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else online here? Uh, first of all, Fonda says thank you to uh, Alex. So she said great response. And then okay. Fonda's also asking you a question, Claire. Uh, she says that Mama's Notes touched my soul. Great project and purpose. Oh, thank you for sharing your personal story. No question, actually. Oh. <laughs> uh, 
So sorry about that, Fonda. I created a little bit of confusion. You coming in with a question, Shana? Yeah, I do have a question. Um, well, first, I have a comment for Alex because I'm very happy to see young people out here doing this. So great job, Alex. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. I actually had a question for Duran. Um, if he's still here, I know we're pushing up to 10. But yes. um, is your online pro uh, online product or service, is it just for barbers or is it for barbers and their clients? I think I, I missed that. That it's for uh, it's for both demographics. So it's for barbers, beauticians, and clients. So clients can create a profile to find barbers and beauticians in their local area. Sweet. Or 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 nationally. Sweet. Cool. Um, and, oh, sorry. Was that it, Shana? Yeah, that was it. That was my question. You're uh, cu lying. cutting out. I'm cutting out. No, I think the rant's cutting out there. Oh, okay. Um, just uh, somebody online, or again, uh, uh, Fonda asked if it was an app or a consulting service. So I don't know if that was. Um, yeah, go ahead. Uh, you, 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 you were cutting out, Jerry. Um, Fonda wanted to know if it was an app or a consulting service. And I told her app. Um, I, all I heard was, uh, is it an app or a consulting service? Yes. I think Duran's got a little bit of a tough yeah, connection. Yeah, so, so, so it is an app. Yeah, so, so it is an app. You are able to use it uh, on your phone, Android, uh, tablet, or a desktop uh, computer. Okay, and she's also asking, did you say you'll promote unlicensed stylists and barbers? Um, yes, yeah, so unlicensed stylists and barbers. Uh, so licensed and unlicensed barbers can uh, sign up on our app. It's based off of now if a customer chooses a unlicensed uh, stylist or barber, it's based on quality of work. Um, so it's basically on the customer's preference. All right, I think, uh, are there any more? I think we're good, Duran. Are there any more questions uh, from the crowd? Either on the, on the line with uh, Zoom or on Facebook? I, I do have one more question for OG Jeremy. Um, Go ahead. The question, the question is, if you were to win the 99 problems but a pitch ain't won today, how would you be investing the $99? Hey, you're muted. I, we can't hear you, Jeremy. Can you hear me now? Okay. Uh, I'd reinvest that $99 in this pitch competition as a sponsor for one of the upcoming rounds. Not to bias the voting on my side. <laughs> <laughs> I don't vote for these types of reasons. Um, uh, Thank you, Jeremy. Fonda made a statement. I'm going to hold off and talk to you later, Duran. Um, it's not a bad. Well, she said uh, the state requires these professions to be licensed. Um, and rather than us address it right now in a choppy little thing, uh, we can talk a little bit later unless you want to address something with that right now. Um, we, 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 we can talk about it later. That's fine. Okay. All right. Um, he hears you, Fonda. I, okay. want to, I want to applaud everyone in this group. I'm incredibly impressed by the diversity of ideas. So thank you guys all for sharing so much. You know, Duran, Steve, Alex, <clears throat> Claire, and Jeremy. And um, I'm, I'm remembering Pilgrim. <laughs> Norma. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, Norma. That was my great grandmother's name. So thank you. All right. So I'm going to launch the poll. So online on the, uh, the Zoom call, you've got a poll that will pop up and you can pick one of the names. So Duran, Alex, Norma, Claire, Steve, and Jeremy. 
And then on a uh, line, I put the numbers out there, but number one is Duran, number two is Alex, number three is Norma, number four is Claire, and number five is Jeremy. And we're gonna run into, are we? Nope, we got. I think you forgot to mention Steve in that, Jerry. Um, I skipped over him a little bit because I feel like he didn't complete the pitch. Gotcha. Um, and he, his connection got lost and uh, he, he hopes everything's okay with everyone else's pitch. Um, so I have my, oh wait, I've only got, uh, all right, we're at eight of the 11 votes. We're at nine. Oh, so, okay, all right. Um, I need, I've got two more people out there to vote. If you could figure out how to cast your vote, you can vote for yourself. So did you vote, Alex? Did you vote, uh, Jeremy? So vote for ourselves? Um, you can. Sweet, <laughs> trying to do that now. <laughs> Okay, um, ah, Fonda. <laughs> All right, so here's where we're gonna sit. Um, and so I'm gonna show you, I can't combine the polling from the external people. Uh, and the, I, I can't show you like a combined result unless I did it real quick. Um, Okay, I got this now. So what this looks like in the uh, sharing the results, I've got a, a tie with Alex and Claire. Norma also got a vote from online and Duran got another vote from online, which would put him at a tie there as well. The problem is Alex and Claire also got another vote. So now I've got Alex and Claire um, uh, tied and we've never had a tie before. So I don't know how to solve this. Uh, first prize goes to Alex. First prize goes to Alex. Um, I thought maybe if I said that, that Claire would solve it for me because there's <laughs> like that. So Alex, you did it. All right. Yay. Awesome so good job. job. Great job, Alex. Um, I, I definitely need to say something. I know you got to go, Duran. So please, you know, you and I are going to talk at like one or something, I think, today still. Yes, sir. All right. So good job. Thank you. Please come back to this. If anybody else has to drop off, please come back to this. But let me uh, Sorry, definitely. Dur oh, go ahead. Sorry, Dre. I just wanted to ask if uh, Duran would be able to post to the fledgling Facebook or whatever when you do your 60 second pitch for your entrepreneur or whatever, so we can cheer you on that way too. Uh, can, you, can you say that one, one more time, please? Sure. I would just love to hear your pitch that you do for entrepreneur and okay. you'd be, I don't know if you're recording it or if you're doing it live or how it's going to work out, but we'd love to. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I'll be uh, recording it um, and submitting it online. Um, but uh, I can, I think I can uh, post it to the Fledge and you know, and tag everyone in it, so so you guys can view it. Yeah, yeah I'll, cool. I'll, I'll talk with him more about that later, so that we can. Uh, we need to get Duran out there because you know, as I look through the problems, and I'll just start with Duran real quick. You've got COVID. You've got. Um, a more difficult way to be able to uh, schedule this and things need to be safer. And at first, you know, I'm thinking these guys at the, at the Capitol protesting, you know, getting a haircut and all that. And I'm like, this ain't that important. It's not a school subject. It's not a dentist subject, you know, it's just a haircut. But then I started hearing people talk about, as, as I've been talking to different people that own salons about how they're, they're the therapist for a lot of people. So they might be paying for getting the nails done, but they're going to that weekly call with their friend that talks through and they get to, you know, 
you know, talk about their kids or talk about their problems that they're having. And I've really, you know, my whole thought on the, the salons in general has really changed as I see how it has such an impact on self-esteem and mental health and all of that. So Duran, big shout out to you for making that industry safer and for doing this right out of uh, Lansing here. So he's in Thank Atlanta, you. but he's, he's from Lansing. I probably should have put that out there earlier too. <laughs> um, so uh, these, so then you look at Alex, Alex, I love what you're doing because you're slowing down fashion. Fashion is so fast and it's so harmful to the environment, to people around the world. Um, so solving a really significant problem. I looked to Norma and I talked about that problem right at the beginning. I don't want to go back to school. I don't want everybody not social distancing. I want to slow this virus down because that's going to be what ultimately gets the economy going back, going, uh, going back. It's what's going to get the community back together. It's going to what be what allows people to get out of their house and connect with people and start to feel human again, I think, in a lot of ways. And Claire, of course, you know, what you're doing to help mothers and you look at all of the mothers that are stepping up, look at Portland right now, showing up with, you know, uh, showing up and taking on the feds. You you don't even have to say anything more than that. So mothers are so important. And again, a shout out to all the black mothers that so many people are leaning on to get us through, you know, the, the racial divide and the uh, kind of unrest that's happening because so many of us are standing up and saying black lives matter. So very good problem, Claire. Uh, Steve, I'm sorry we lost him because um, one of the things that he told me that I didn't know a few weeks ago is there are no black owned baby food uh, manufacturers in the US. And when you think about, you know, who's who's controlling the food supply in our neighborhood, you know, in a lot of ways, if it wasn't for the Allen Neighborhood Center, we'd probably never see produce or we've got our great community gardens and all of that. But it's liquor stores, it's McDonald's, it's the fast food you know, lunch places, we've got these food deserts and to have a, a black owned baby food company, I think is important because, you know, these corporations have proved again and again, sometimes, you know, McDonald's doesn't seem like they care about us. I mean, they want to get us fed fast and all of that, but the nutrition, the harm that they do, um, such an important problem. And then Jeremy, access to information. If the libraries aren't there, if we're not teaching people, if we're not giving people books, if we're not uh, you know, giving people the opportunity to 3D print or check out a sewing machine or whatever it turns out to be, um, we got six problems right here, six significant problems that are being solved by people in the community. And Remember, that's what we want. We want our community to be strong so that we can build our own future. So I wanna tell you one other thing, Alex. I think this is the most competitive um, uh, 99 problems, but a pitch ain't one that we've had so far. And you took the first prize away. So not only did you win it, but you won one of the tough ones. So very, very good job. Um, so. And to all of you. Good job, Norma. Good job, Claire. Thank, Thank you, Duran, for chiming in and coming in from Atlanta. We appreciate you. Um, good job, Jeremy. And uh, oh, I don't know if Sam Wise is uh, uh, out there, but good job to everybody. We love you all so much. We're so happy to have you um, in our community, building the community stronger. And I do want to put one more thing out there. The community, you know, is defined by all kinds of different ways. We can say geographical and we're on the east side in Lansing, but it's also the community of mothers. It's the community of librarians. It's the community of young people. It's the community of, you know, the, the, uh, um, the, the black business owners and all of that. Everybody, you can be anywhere in the world and be part of our community. We just want you build in your own future. We don't want you buying it from Amazon and places like that. So thank you, everybody. We love you very much. 
Good job. And we'll see you not next Friday, but next Sunday. You got something, Claire? I did. I was just wondering now that we know who the winner is shaking out, uh, what Alex's plans are to use the first funding. Do you have any plans to do? What are you going to do with that money? I'm going to use it to buy tools and fabric. Very cool. So we're going to work with Emily at the Fledge and try to get one of the sewing machines tuned up and in good shape for him so he doesn't have to spend the $99 on that. And he can spend it on some of the more maybe esoteric tools that, again, I don't know what those could be, a symbol for your thumb or something like that. <laughs> I do want to say, I, Alex, I can't wait to see your next design. And I hope that you can bring that to the next 99 problems, but a pitch ain't one. If you okay. got the design, we all are looking forward to seeing it. Okay. Yeah, I said Norma's a badass, but Alex is a badass too. Sorry to swear. Um, but very good job today, guys. Anything else? Uh, Fonda loves the baby food. I'll just put that shout out there. Uh, she likes your idea, and especially as it relates to reading and sharing information and telling us a great show. So I think it was a great show, too. Remember, it's always because of the crowd. It's never because of me. I got one, nothing. Guys, one, uh, one thing real quick, uh, Jerry, if we got a second. Um, I just want to let everybody know that this Saturday, um, uh, Tilt, uh, the uh, organization that I started together, uh, this is Lansing Together. We'll be out at 127 by Frandor cleaning up with Punks with Lunch at 10 o'clock in the morning. So if you want to come out and help clean, uh, pick up some trash, make this uh, city look a little bit better, it'd be nice to have any of you out there. All right. Nice plug, Jeremy. Anybody else want to plug something? Yeah, I think the main, I think the main thing that we need is, um, from the concept to actual practice, is a team to work with you know, design concepts and web application. I don't know how to do word of mouth. I mean, there's just a lot of things, but I'm pretty sure that schools and teachers and school nurses and PTAs all want and need this stuff and they would buy it as soon as it's ready, I believe. I didn't do any deep market research on it, but I know young parents, believe me, and their, and their grandparents who might have more money would spend money to keep those kids safe in my belief system. All right, so that's another uh, call out for a team. I'll be posting some of this. Like I'll post what you said, Jeremy. I'll post what you just said and ask for that team there. Anything else, anyone? I'll plug two real quick. And also a plug prior, if Steve's listening in still. Um, I just launched a organic meal delivery service here in town, zero waste delivered right to your door. Uh, I have a couple moms who are already signed up and they've got young kiddos who they would probably really enjoy having healthy food in that box for their kids too. So if you're interested, a heroic mama at gmail.com. I have one spot still open. All right. I'll make sure he gets that message, Claire, and I'll make an introduction of you too as well. Okay. Yeah, that'd be awesome. And there's the magic joke. <laughs> As serendipity happens. I got a food thing. I've got another spot. And, you know, thanks for being the personification of it. We can always point to Joe to uh, show us that magic is real and it happens. So, but really, again, I love the crowd. I love the people. The diversity of thought is what makes us strength, strong. Our strength isn't necessarily in our sameness, it is in our differences. That's what makes us know more. That's what makes us solve problems better. It makes us innovative, creative, and generally all badasses. So go out and be badasses, and I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks, Jerry. Bye, all everybody. Right. See you guys.